like Yeah, whatever. Four days later. Hello. Hello. Hi, come on. Hi. Hi. Well, having a good time? Woo! Enjoying all the Boston? Yeah. The tenth year. How many of you been here all ten years? Oh, God. <laughs> wow. I'm David Williams. I am with uh, Sentai Filmworks now. I've been in the anime industry for about 20 years. Uh, twice as long as anime Boston. Uh, I started out working originally with uh, ADB Films as a uh, producer, director, uh, subtitler, DVD author, uh, directed Be an Angel, uh, Free Tier, a uh, whole slew of stuff. Um, I've done pretty much anything and everything that you can do in the anime industry I've done at one point or another. And now as of uh, 2010, as of 2010, I'm working with Sentai Filmworks. So, this is the Sentai Filmworks panel, by the way. But, if you've been to my old AD panels and the new Sentai panels, they run pretty much the same. So I'll talk about some of the new stuff we've got coming out, make some announcements, and uh, we'll open it up for questions, and of course, I have DVDs and Blu-rays to give away. So we've got a bunch of DVDs and Blu-rays that I'll give out. And uh, we'll start this off, let me run through some of the titles that uh, Sentai has coming out. Uh, let's see, this is April, so I'll do a real quick on April. We've got, uh, and a lot of these are down in our booth, at the Section 23 booth, if you want to go down there. Uh, we've got uh, Moto 2 Love Through Complete Collection is out. Uh, Infinite Stratus Complete in both DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, a uh, license rescue from the old Genyon is Sunday's Dreamer complete in uh, Gogol 13 Collection 3 is finally coming out. Uh, in May, we've got uh, Psychic Squad Collection 1, which actually I have some uh, down in the booth at the moment. Uh, we've rescued uh, from the old ADV titles that expired. We grabbed uh, Get Backers, so we're re releasing a complete set of that. That'll be out in May. May also sees a DVD and Blu-ray of a complete collection of Gwen Saga and uh, Book of Bantora Collection 1, which uh, Chris Ayers, who's up here, has been directing for us. Uh, also in May, we're going to have a DVD and a Blu-ray of Plan Z, and the Gintama movie will be coming out in May on uh, DVD and Blu-ray. That one's going to be dubbed. It's the first Gintama that we've actually dubbed. So we're kind of watching to see how that does. If you're really interested in Gintama, you're really interested in Gintama dub, uh, show your support and pick up the movie. So we're going to kind of keep an eye on that one. Uh, in June, I have uh, Kuranai Complete coming out. Fate Stay Night Ultimate Blade Works. Comes out in June. It's going to be a DVD and Blu-ray both. I have a lot of people asking about it because we've got the banner down at the booth. Uh, Gogo 13 Collection 4 will be out in June. Yeah. <laughs> uh, K-On! Season 2 Collection Woo! 1 on both uh, Blu-ray and DVD will be coming out in June. And by the way, I know some people will probably ask, the shorts for k -On are not available, so we were not able to, to get those. They're not up for license. So. Uh, also in June, we're going to have Marie, Maria Hollick Alive Complete Collection coming out. And that one, by the way, oh God, so much work to do this. They have a Japanese commentary on every episode. Uh, and also in June, rounding out June, we're going to have uh, DVD and Blu-ray of Tawana Kwong will be coming out. Uh, July, and this is, July is the last month that we've announced titles for so far, so we've got Hidamari Sketch SP will be coming out in July. We've actually supposed to be sending a PR for it. So, uh, I have a complete collection, both DVD and Blu-ray for Needless will be out in July. Uh, we will be doing 
We did something similar to this here uh, with another time. We're going to be doing a, the uh, Maho Romantic Ultimate Collection and Maho Romantic I'm Home. Um, the Ultimate Collection will contain the, the new I'm Home series. So you can get both of them like that. If you've already bought the uh, earlier Maho Romantics, then you can just buy the, the new ones. We did the same thing with the Rosenbaum. When we released that, we released a collection that had the original series and the new one in it, or you could just buy the, the uh, new one. So we're doing the same thing with the Maho Romantic. Uh, Book of Antora Collection 2 will be in July. Psychic Squad Collection 2. And also, one that I've been asked quite a bit about, Clannad After Story Blu-ray will be coming out. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Kinoichi Theatrical will be in July, and Hatsukoi Limited Complete, which does include the specials with that one, will be coming out in July. And you want to hear some stuff we haven't talked about yet? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've got The World God Only Knows Season 2. We're going to do another title that lapsed over in ADV. We're going to be releasing a new release of Parasite Balls. We're going to do a DVD and a Blu-ray of This Boy Can Fight Aliens, which is an interesting little show because this is done by a woman who kind of took uh, uh, inspiration from Shinkai, and she went and did her own production completely on, on her own there, so uh, that's a, a pretty nice little short, so we'll see if she uh, ends up being quite as big. Uh, also in August, another one that a lot of people have asked me for, we're going to be DVDs and Blu-rays of number six complete collection. <laughs> and that one there again, for your information, has a Japanese commentary on every episode. So those will be included. Uh, and Kohime Complete Collection will be coming out in August. So those are the uh, most of the release schedule up through August. I've got a few other things I'm going to talk about. A lot of people have asked us what we plan to do with, we've got the uh, persona. And yeah. uh, a lot of people have asked us what we're going to do with the dub. Uh, I want to tell you that we are going to use the game cast to do the double film. So Johnny Lindoff, I talked with him a couple of weeks ago. He's going to be reprising his roles, and, and uh, they're going to have the game cast. They're getting uh, started to dub that right away, so that will be coming out pretty soon. Uh, okay, some new things. Some new things we got. I've got a ton of stuff that's being simulcast that's coming out. But I'm only going to tell you a little bit of it right now. We're going to be doing, and this is probably not much of a surprise to anybody that's been following it, we're going to be doing Five Rain Series 2. We're also going to do, I should probably do the English names for these instead of the Japanese so I don't mess them up, Sakamichi no Apollon, otherwise known as the Kids on the Slope. We're going to do, uh, and also another one that I will announce here is Nazo no Kanoji, Kanojo X, or otherwise My Mysterious Girlfriend X, which will teach you not to trade drool with people. <laughs> That's a little strange one. Uh, so those are some of our new announcements, some of the things we've got coming up. And uh, at this point, I'll uh, pretty much just open it up for Q&A. We'll just chat, take questions, yeah. Do I think we might license the second season of Omegami SS? Uh, one of my favorite things to say about things like that is I can either confirm or deny. We might, it's possible, but I can't tell you until we actually have a signed contract. Yeah, cool. Um, right, but right behind you. Right behind you. date for the next set of the schedule right now, so. Yes.
Okay, um, titles that we've released on DVD, about future releases on Blu-ray. Um, most of the stuff, it, it depends on, on multiple things. It depends on whether or not HD masters are available. Because personally, I really don't like up-resing SD video for HD and putting it out on Blu-ray. Um, so it depends on whether HD masters are available. Uh, it depends on uh, whether we get a dub for the titles. Is the show big enough that we think it can support it? Blu-ray is still really expensive for us to press right now. Blu-ray doesn't sell as much, so we can't press as much, and we get charged higher rates since they're small press runs. So it's still pretty expensive. Uh, there are possibilities, there are cases where, like with Clannad, where we've gone back and done a Blu-ray and selling. So the possibility is there for a title. It depends on, on how strong that title seems to be. Okay. We've got somebody over here in the hat. High School of the Dead. We want to know about season two, huh? Yeah, I'd love to know about that too. <laughs> um, no, High School of the Dead is still, we're pushing them. We keep saying, hey, come on guys, we need more High School of the Dead. Um, but I don't have any news on season two yet. They still haven't, haven't done production over there. So we got a whole bunch of High School of the Dead merchandise at the booth though. <laughs> if you want to come see some, want to draw tattoos and stuff on uh, some naked buns, there's a little notebook and stuff like that. Uh, back here in the back on your on your couch. I just that's what I was just saying a few minutes ago that for Persona 4 we are going to have all the game cast come back and reprise their roles. So they will be doing the dub for Persona 4. Johnny will be in this. Yes. Would I consider licensing? I would consider licensing anything. I guess in that case, I'm a licensing board. I don't know. Uh, I would consider anything, any title and whatnot. And we do. There's an awful lot of titles that we are looking at. Most of the stuff that we look at, when we first get a title that we um, are, are considering, in most cases, the Japanese haven't even started production yet. So we're looking at stuff long in advance before uh, they're doing any production work on it. But we, I would consider licensing anything. Uh, if I think that there's enough fans out there that would like to see it brought over here to the States, I'm up for it. Uh, so, in the last couple of months, I've noticed that the things I've been liking a lot, a lot of stuff, sort of around this stuff, like the Okay, what goes into thinking where we think we can license all these titles at once and, and, and the risk factors and stuff? Um, you, what you don't see, you, you see all of our announcements of what we're saying we're licensing and what we're not like. What you don't see are the large number of titles that we pass on, the ones that we're not licensing. Um, what we consider is A, um, do we have the production capacity to handle it? And that's why I'm a little, little leery here, because we've got a whole slew of new simulcasts that are about to start up. And I'm like, eh. Simulcasts, we started out slow with one here, a couple there. But we've been growing, and as we've been able to build our capacity to handle that, we've been able to bring in more. Uh, so that's, that's the first thing I'm going to look at, is, is our production capacity. We're a small company. I'm not anywhere near what it used to be like when I worked at ABV or, or uh, what Funimation is like. We're a small company, so... We look at our production capacity first off. Then we look at um, how much do they want for the show. <laughs> uh, we are trying very hard not to repeat all the errors that were done years ago. We don't want to get into bidding wars. We don't want to drive prices up all down. We want to pay what is you know, appropriate for a show. Um, and the other thing we're going to look at is how's the market? How are sales? Okay. Um, and there again, it's not like it was in the heyday, but uh, we think that uh, things are, are looking pretty good at the moment. So to us, yeah, it's, it's a risk to take on a whole bunch of new titles, but at the same time, it's a calculated one, and I think that it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, 
to that question. Since you guys started releasing Blu-rays, all of them have had uh, text subs. So they've all been yellow and hideous, like DVDs. I was wondering if you guys were going to be starting maybe to do picture subs like Funny has. Picture subs? Actually, all the subs that we put on our Blu-rays are actually TIFF images. And why are they yellow and They're ugly? Not, because that's the color we assigned to them. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> they turned them to be the most readable color for subtitles on, on video. So that's, that is, that's what we, we follow yeah. that, and that's what we use. That's Yes? Is there any possible chance for Glass Mask Collection 2? Glass Mask Collection 2. I would love to be able to do Glass Mask Collection 2, but at the moment it just has not sold. We're still actually in the red on that title. Uh, we've kicked around different ideas, including trying to convince the Japanese to just go ahead and give it to us. So maybe if we got that out, it might help spark the sales in the first part of the But we haven't been able to do anything we could actually afford to do that. So. At the moment, Glass Mask 2 is still on the shelf. Uh, behind the uh, Hi. Um, any chance that Maid Sama will come out as a full season box set rather than the two separate ones? Maid Sama coming out in the full season collection? Actually, uh, yeah, it should be pretty soon. I don't know exactly when. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me get back over this side of the Chris! Hi. Um, Familiar with Zero Simulcast and challenges with previous seasons not being available. Um, one thing I like to do when we do a, a, a season like that that we haven't done the others for is to be sure that we're consistent. So we look for the, the people to do the translation, uh, make sure that names and, and anything else that might fall in there. Um, so far, I don't really recognize that. I don't think there, there were any real problems with that particular title in itself. Uh, I know there's one, and I can't think of which title it is right now, that uh, they're wanting to get the same translator for, and because Janice just contacted me, she's like, are you on LinkedIn? And I was like, yeah, I got a LinkedIn account. And she's like, the translator, I can only contact him on LinkedIn, and I don't have one, and I've got to, so I want you to get in touch with him. Um, something like that would be about really the only issue. Oh, the fans not being able to get the other. Uh, that is a concern, um, and it's something that we've taken and we, we really discuss internally before we license a show. Um, in the case of Familiar, I have hope that the others will become available. Um, I don't have any actual word to say on that at the moment, but I do hope that they will become available. So I think that will become a new point in the future. Now, when you say old classics, you look like you're in, you're in my, my area, right? What I think of as an old classic. Okay, yeah. To me, that's a classic. The people that come up to me and tell me, 2008, that's old. I'm like, no, that's not old school. Um, there, there are some, there's a lot of that stuff that we're really interested in. Uh, because, I, like I said, I've been in anime for a long, I was an anime fan long before I was in the industry, and I've been in the industry for 20 years, so I've seen a lot of anime, and I think there's some really good shows out there from the 80s and, and 90s and whatnot that are not available right now. When we can, we like to do some of those, but we can't do a whole lot of them because they, overall, they just don't sell as well. Everybody seems to want the new, shiny stuff. Um, so we have to be careful about doing those, but we are looking at some, and we do like to do some of those and get some of those out. So. Uh, you have... For which one? Higurashi. Higurashi? No, ADD didn't originally, didn't originally have Higurashi. That was originally, yes, that was originally Genion. Well, no, go ahead. Any interest in, actually, yes, there is. Um, 
I know uh, several of the people, well, we're all anime fans that work up there at Sentai, and a lot of them really like the series. So yeah, we're interested in it. You know, it's just a matter of given the I, because we can see the sales figures for the first series, we know what it did. It's a question of being able to get the uh, other series and whatnot and do them in a means that will make money or at a price point and whatnot that will make money. So uh, we're interested in. I'm interested actually in pretty much anything. <laughs> if it's anime or, or, or Japanese like live action or, or whatever, I'm probably interested in it. Yeah. Since you're releasing uh, complete collections of like um, Mahoromatic, like you announced, and then a single disc of um, Welcome Home, and you did that with Rosa Maiden, I'm, and I know you guys have Elfin Lead. I remember ADB at one point had the Elfin Lead OVA. Okay, and first off, we don't have Elfin Lead. Oh, ADB. Okay, ADB has Elfin Lead. And by the way, people, ADB is still a company, and it's still out there. So ADV has Elf and Lee. We don't have Elf and Lee. Um, and actually, ADV never really had the rights to be OVA for Elf and Lee. They just had the series. So anything beyond that, I couldn't talk about ADV because I haven't been. ADV and I parted ways in 2008. So what they've done, I know they're still around. Uh, they've got a contract with Section 23 Films to distribute a few things that they do have, like Elf and Lee. Uh, but what they're doing or plans or anything else, I couldn't really say anything about it. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, have you ever considered uh, licensing any uh, live action properties? Uh, yes. Uh, we actually have a couple of live action properties at uh, Sentai right now. We are slowly kind of playing with that. Um, we really needed, wanted to get the company on a good solid footing, so we stuck with our core, which was anime. Uh, but we are interested at the point that we're able to handle it, and we've got the capacity and, and the funds and whatnot to do some more live action. Yeah. Actually, we do have, we've had some stuff on Amazon video as well. Um, Dream Eater Mary was on Amazon. We put our shows on um, on any of the uh, the streaming outfits that, that we're interested in carrying. So we've got shows on Hulu, uh, Netflix, uh, Crunchyroll, uh, YouTube, Amazon, Xbox, Sony PlayStation. It's all of those. We just we put them out on all of them. So yes, we are, are very interested in carrying one of those. Yeah. Are we going to have, cha we have channels, like the Funimation channel? Uh, <laughs> if we were at ADV, we did. <laughs> we don't have anything like that right now. Uh, we do contract with Anime Network to uh, carry our stuff where, uh, where they show things. Um, where they've, got, uh, they've got some VOD uh, stuff set up on some. I think they just started up with Comcast again and whatnot. Um, but we, we contract with them to carry some of our stuff. We don't have a channel ourselves. Um, we're really a small company. There are not very many people over here. So uh, we don't have uh, the capacity to be able to do networks and things like that ourselves these days. Oh, oh, uh, combat bomber? Uh, interesting. But I can either confirm or deny anything you want to have. <laughs> So, you're putting it 
you got to buy it first before you can put it on Kickstarter. And you can't put it on Kickstarter. You don't want to put it on Kickstarter because you don't want to buy it until you know what it's going to do. So it's just kind of this catch-22 thing. So it doesn't really work out well. There, there was somebody was asking me yesterday that was interested in doing some stuff. And um, it's, it's just, it's kind of a tricky, hard thing to do. I don't, I'm not really sure how to work it out. Yeah. <laughs> I neither confirm nor deny. We've got the movie in, that's all I'll talk about. There's the TV show is available. So. Uh, in the room. Uh, so you said talk about Luffy and sales numbers. Do, do stream numbers still correspond to sales numbers? We know streaming is still a very new concept. Or what's looking at your licensing new series? Are looking at past sales number even more dependable than, let's say, the streaming numbers, maybe? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, he's asking about streaming numbers and sales numbers, and are, is streaming a good uh, indication for sales or are past sales numbers still better? Um, we look at both. We look at what titles have done in the past, what similar titles. Um, if it's a title that we've rescued, we look to see what it did in the past. We also look at the streaming numbers, and the streaming is becoming much more important for us. Um, we, have a, we, we look at those numbers, and they can change our plan. Normally we license a title, and we're going to say, okay, we think this title is going to do such, such and such, so this one we're going to put out on DVD, and it's going to be some title we're going to okay? This one's going to be really big, so we're going to put it out on Blu-ray and give it a dub. Okay, but we're streaming them. So we're going to look at those streams, and we're going to say, okay, you know, wow, this thing's got a lot of stream hits. It's really popular. We'll go ahead and bump it up and do Blu-rays and dubs for it as well. We have done that in the past. Um, as I said before, a good example was uh, Demon King was uh, a title that we thought was going to be some kind of only, but we looked at the streaming numbers, and it was streaming on Crunchyroll and Anime Network, two channels at the same time. And it was second only to the screen numbers for High School of the Dead. So at that point, we're like, okay, you know, that's, a, that's one that we need to bump up with Doug, and, and there's a lot of interest in it. So we do look at that, and it is a good way. If you've got a title and you really want to see it on Blu-ray, you really want to see it dubbed, get all your friends to go out and watch the streams. Because we do compare those numbers. It's not a complete, it's not something that we can use to decide to license a title. Okay, because we have to license it first. But what we do, that's why we look at past sales numbers for similar shows or for that time if it's not the rest of us. We use both. Okay, let's get uh, here. Yeah. Uh, you guys a dub version? A dub version? Um, pardon? Yeah, um, I don't have any comments on, on doing a dub at the moment for There was, um, I say, we, we tend to, we, we look at the titles and if there's enough interest in it, we think it's going to sell well enough, then we can do a dub. Dubs are really expensive for us to produce. Um, if it's, but there's a lot of titles that we think, well, people are interested in seeing. So if it's not going to sell enough, to cover the cost of the dub, and we're just going to do it subtitled over. There's been a few cases where we've gone back and done a dub for one that we released subtitled only. I don't like to do that because I don't want I don't want you as fans to say, "Wow, I went and bought this, and now you're releasing that." Um, so we try to be very careful about that. There's a few cases that were special cases where things that happened to come about where we were able to go back and do it again, or like with Granada and whatnot. Um, but in most cases, and it is possible that there will be dubs that come out for other ones, but in most cases, if it comes out some kind of way, that's more than likely to be called a dub. Pardon? What's involved in a dub? Oh, that's something I used to do a lot of. Um, the last one that I worked on was uh, the non-after story. Um, oh, let's
let's see, as a director's point of view, things that are involved in it, you've got to uh, know the story inside and out. I have to be really intimate with all of those characters. I have to know those characters really well. Um, <laughs> Um, I have to uh, bring actors in, audition them for the roles, um, and cast them, decide who's going to play which roles. I have to be able to communicate to them who, uh, what, what the characters like, what their motivations are, what they're doing in a particular scene. Uh, I have to have an audio engineer that sits there. We have to have a big recording booth with uh, sound mixing equipment. Um, we have to, after it's all recorded, after we have everybody come in and record all their lines, it's got to go to a mixer who mixes in the audio effects, and the music and sound effects, the MMEs as we call them, with the, uh, with the voice dialogue that we just recorded. Uh, and then they've got to uh, have new encoders that do the encoding that are going to go on the DVD or the uh, Blu-ray, in addition to the Japanese track that we're already doing. So there's a lot of work and time involved in moving the dog. It can be pretty expensive. Uh, back over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you mentioned earlier about live action interest. What about Common Rider? Common Rider? Yeah, I'd be interested in it. I can neither confirm nor deny if I've actually looked at it, but I would definitely be interested in the titles. Yeah, let's get back over here. Yeah. Uh, somebody else kind of brought it up, but uh, how are you doing on the labors? Have you ever uh, thought about looking at the uh, at which one? Karen O'Keefe, the Garden. Yeah. Uh, I, as I said before, I look at everything. Seriously, really, people, we look at everything. If there's a title that's in Japan, um, we check it out. Um, yes, we do look at everything. Beyond that, unless I make a license announcement, I can't really tell. Sit, comment on it because they're going to be. Uh, there's, there's other companies that are looking to, and we don't want to tip, they might not have noticed something, and we don't want to tip our hat. And like I said, we're really trying hard to avoid the, the old um, like, um, bidding wars that popped up in the past with the companies. So, uh, let me see. Yeah. Yes, yes. about getting the uh, second season of whatnot of Higurashi. That would be the primary reason that we would be interested in licensing it. <laughs> the first season, it would be nice to, to be able to bring out and keep it on the shelves. But the main reason that we would be interested in it would be to do the second third season of whatnot, have, have those out available to be I know there's people in the office are like, I want to have that on my show! So. Uh, number six is both sub and dub, and it will have a Blu-ray and DVD release. So. Uh, yeah. So it's been discovered that you guys license Hoshio Kodomo, uh, Children of Chase Lost Voices. Do you guys have a date for that or any time frame? I don't have any, uh, neither confirm or deny that we have that title. <laughs> I know that some people see uh, See things out on the internet, but I can neither confirm nor deny anything about that title at the moment. But children who live chase lost voices, keep in mind, a lot of us that work at Sentai used to work at ADV and had pretty good relationships with certain people who produced shows over in Japan, so <laughs> can't say anything more than that. So you're friends with Shinkai, is what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I've heard his name, it sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know anything about it. I have to go back and look. I really don't know. In the water. Okay, you're talking about putting things in the packaging and putting discs on spindles and whatnot. Um, the reason for it is because it's very inexpensive, uh, particularly when you've got a whole bunch of discs in a series, uh, in a set. Um, in most cases, like the Blu-rays, those don't come on spindles. DVDs, if it's um, a complete collection that has like four or more discs or so, those will generally be on spindles. If it's uh, smaller than that, they'll just be in regular key cases. Um, but it's just, like I say, we're a really small company and we're trying to watch our, our uh, expenses everywhere we can. DVDs don't, I, I wish they did better, but in the past, you'd be, you know, if a title sold 10,000 copies, you were like, yeah, that's, that's a decent title, it's doing all right. These days, if a title sells 2,000 copies or 3,000 copies, you're thinking, wow, we've got a hit! Um, and you just take a moment to think about that. Anime Boston gets what? I think they had, I don't know, this year, but last year I think they had like, what, 15, 16,000? 19,000. 19,000 last year? 19,000 attendees. And you're selling a, a, a series and you sell two or 3,000 copies? So. You know, you gotta, you gotta really, you gotta be careful with our expenses. So that's the primary reason that we do that. Yes. Okay. He's asking before we can look at streaming numbers or whatnot. How do we decide if it can be a dub or a sub? Um. First, and, and I'll be honest, first thing we look at is our gut feeling about the title. Um, like I said, I've been an anime fan for decades, been in the industry for a long time. I go to every convention and talk to all the fans that I can possibly get out and meet. Um, so I like to try and keep on top of what people are interested in, what types of shows, where the, uh, uh, the market's going, where, the, where fandom's going. So. And being an anime fan, I can look at it and say, wow, this show's really cool. This is going to be great. Um, so that, that would be first and foremost. But then on top of that, we go and look at, okay, this show is similar to such and such. Um, is there, what, what did that show do? We go look on video and see how many uh, copies that show sold. Um, is this a title that has been overdone recently in the U.S.? And I tell you, if they ask me to watch another high school girl show, I think I'm going to pull my hair out sometimes. Oh. Give me something new, please! Um, so we look at, at things like that. But there's, there's several factors that we consider. And then we'll decide based on that in past history, just stuff that we've seen how things have gone in the past. And then that can change after we start watching the streaming movies. Yes, for K on season two, he's asking about the voice cast for it. That is the that is the same voice cast we were using. So we are keeping anywhere that we possibly can. We would like to keep consistent with uh, with the dub cast, with the with the translators. Even we want to keep the namings and everything. We want to maintain consistency throughout those series. So um, unless something pops up that we really can't do it, we always try to keep those same dub casts. And K on the R. It's actually being done right now. Oh, let's see. Right. Yeah. Any um, way, any idea of how you're releasing some more yet in the US? All the episodes on set. That has. He's asking about releasing Persona 4. What's going to be released from that? That is still up in the air at the moment. Um, we just recently uh, agreed and worked things out to be able to use the game cast. Uh, we're looking at. What's going to be, we have to get all the materials in from Japan, we got to get all the dub cast, uh, all the dub stuff in. It's going to be a matter of when we can get that stuff and what we can get out from the end. So that's what we're still looking at. Uh, okay. um, you mentioned like keeping consistency in dub casts. Uh, Fade Unlimited Blay Works, they've been announced that it's going to be dubbed. Are you going to try to get the original cast back for that? Uh, that one? 
Because that one's already being worked on right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where that, how that was being done, who was, who was handling those, and I don't, I, I don't know off the top of my head. No, it's fine. No problem. Yeah. 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 Um, so Nod, Demon King, uh, those are those are just a few of the stuff. The high school they did is probably by far. <laughs> um, the fallout from Long Nine? Okay, uh, he's asking about the fallout. For uh, Bondi's titles and such, since they've shut down this year. Um, well, some of them, it's my understanding, they're still releasing over here. They still have product and they're going to still keep selling those. Uh, others are either reverting back to the licensors or, to, or Bondi itself is looking at licensing them out. That's my understanding. So, um, I have great confidence that a lot of Bondi titles will still be available, that there's not going to need to be a big rush out there right now to grab them. Um, I don't have any specific examples that I can give to but um, their titles, they, they have been, and, and they've actually, before they made their announcements and everything, they were making the rounds letting people know that they were going to license and a lot of these titles out. So, um, I would assume that some of the companies will probably just up some of the So you're asking if we have the extra episode? That I honestly don't know off the top of my head. I would have to go back and, and ask at the office. I really don't know. Do we have the extra episodes if we have any? Yeah. We have got Allison and Lily. Yeah, that uh, actually did pretty good. I actually I really enjoyed that show. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Um, it does it does pretty well for us. Um, Probably it's it's right in line with about what we expected it to do. Um, so I can't say that we're gonna like go back and dub it or anything, but uh, that's pretty it's, it's pretty good show. Huh? Uh, put it into a complete collection or something? I don't have anything on the schedule at the moment for it. Um, it's something that probably would happen sometime in the future, but I don't know. If it's from like Crunchyroll or Anime Network or whatever, you go probably to, to them. I see you were asking about that at the booth. Is that you? Yes. No, yes, I don't believe. Well, I don't know what Amazon's uh, what their terms of service might be or something like that. Um, but actually, if you uh, asked, if you asked the company and said we specifically want to stream it from, say, Amazon, they could let you know if that was okay or not. Um, but that would be something that would depend on the provider that you're streaming it from for your club and um, the particular shows or whatnot. So you have to go ask them. Okay. Uh, yes. Any news for Gintama? At the moment, except for the movie, I don't have anything else. We're doing the movie, it's done, and uh, subtitles. 
and we're watching to see how that settles. And then we'll see how we, all, how we do it with more than Tom or whether it's Doug or the Okay, yes? Amagami SS is a very good title. It's, it's really quite nice new things. Why aren't there uh, Blu-rays the then? The only title, pardon? Why aren't there Blu-rays then if it's doing <laughs> well? Blu -rays. It's not doing Blu-ray <laughs> title numbers. Um, the only thing really so far that we've gotten that we've been disappointed in sales-wise is Glass Mask. That's the one that we were really hoping would do really well. In the movie. Otherwise, uh, the titles, we've been very careful. Like I say, you don't see all the ones that we turned down. Uh, we've been very careful in what we've picked up, and we've been doing fairly well for us. So. Uh, let's see, we've got about 15 minutes left here. I want to give away some of these discs, because they weigh my back down, and I don't want to have to carry them back. Um, give them all to you. Amuse me. <laughs> I used to do that when I was doing panels. Um, I think the last time I did it was like at Oticon. We were doing stupid uh, fan tricks, so you come up and do some stupid fan tricks. I had some people that I was worried about. <laughs> uh, what I normally do, and I pull up my little notes here, what I normally do is I'll ask a, I'll ask a trivia question. And if you know the, question, the answer, raise your hand. Don't yell it out, because you won't win. I've had people yell, ah, this is the answer. Uh, well, now you can walk because everybody knows the answer. Raise your hand. The first hand that goes up that I see, I'll call on you, and if you have the right answer, then you'll win the disc, okay? Got it? All right. First off, I've got here uh, a copy of Complete Collection of Dream Eater Mary DVD. Um, who can tell me... What was the most recent title that I worked on the dub for? So not after story, that's right. Congratulations. Oh, what else do I have here? Ah, I like this show. This is really fun. This is one that I, I've got some friends that were uh, I don't know if I can call them friends right <laughs> they were art, They were film students. And so sometimes they look at anime and they're kind of like, eh. But this is one that I think is very much would be in their thing. I've got a copy of uh, F, A Tale of Melodies on the DVD here. Um, can anybody tell me what was the first Blu-ray release from Zentai? Because they, they actually, Sentai started on the dub, because they were going to originally dub it, 
and then things happened and they decided they couldn't afford to, so they shelved it. And then later on, when they got um, with some, uh, I think it was Madman in Australia, and, uh, the UK and whatnot, they all wanted an English dub, so they all pitched in, and then they were able to finish it off and do it. So. Well, now you've got one. Oh, uh, let's see what else I have here. Okay, I've got a copy of the Blu-ray for the Broken Blade. Okay. Um, I just for this. Okay, in our uh, release, in Sentai's release of uh, Needless, what is Blade's occupation? Priest. Priest. There you go. I have, speaking of Bardock Scramble, I have the Blu-ray of Bardock Scramble, director's cut now. Um, What was Sentai Filmworks' first release? What title was our first release? No, that was actually an ADV title. Yeah. No? You won something already. No? I'll give you a hint. It was actually a licensed rescue. No? Monster 
And I've got a Modern Magic Made Simple DVD. Um, See if I can figure out how I can word this. Okay. Um, in our Ghost Sweep of Mikami release, what's special about the Okie Move? Back in the back? Ghost, yes. <laughs> so I guess dead didn't count. <laughs> um, let's see, what's our time like? We got five minutes. Okay. Well, anybody got anybody else got any more questions or do I have more DVDs? That's it. That's, this is the last one that I have. I've got more at the booth if you want to come buy some. <laughs> Please come buy some. Back here in the black. Yeah. right now. I can either confirm or deny, but it's a possibility. So, yeah. Uh, since I'm looking to stay a small company, or looking to move up to bigger ones? Uh, Santa is looking to stay in business. <laughs> Whatever that takes. Uh, if it means we stay small, we'll stay small. If it means we can move up and do bigger titles, I think we'll move up and do bigger titles. But um, it, it, we, we don't want to. We don't want to follow in the footsteps of some of the earlier companies. So. <laughs> anyway, else? yeah. What's your favorite title you've worked on aside from Dirty Pair? Yeah. Oh, my favorite title I've worked on aside from Dirty Pair. Um, that is really tough because over the years I've worked on hundreds and hundreds of titles, and I've really enjoyed so many of them. Um, one that I go back to because I really thought we had a phenomenal dumb cast. Uh, I go back to quite often as Dean an Angel. Dean an Angel, I liked the story on it, and I think we ended up with a dumb cast on that that was just really, really great. So I, I, I could probably go back to the dumb Dean an Angel. Yeah. Do I have information on what? Waiting in the summer? No. Nothing I can tell you about. <laughs> the moment. Yeah. So what goes into like the script to make it? Maybe adapt script, like I don't know if we're going to talk about a lot of things about the question of what goes into the certain What goes into the decisions on the script changes? How do you adapt it? Adapt it. Okay, well first off, you've got two different types of scripts you're working with, okay? You start off and you get a raw translation of a show. And then you give that to one group that's going to work on a subtitle script. And they're going to try and stick as close as they can to it. Um, sometimes you might get so much text flying up there that they kind of have to pair it down some. But they're going to try and stick closest to it. And you give it also to another group that's going to be doing a dub script. And they're going to be trying to match lip flaps, and things like that. What you look at is at the same time, the people who are doing the subtitle script, they're going to do something that's written in English, but when you do the dub script, the same thing might not be the way it's spoken. So spoken English and written English can be different, so that can make changes in it as well. Um, so those, those are your primary things that you're starting to look at, is lip flap matching, whether it makes sense in spoken English, uh, if that's the way you would say something. And quite often you get something that just doesn't work in English at all, and you'll have to change it into something else that kind of doesn't, particularly when you've got puns. Those are um, really difficult. So those are some of the factors that people are talking about.
Are you talking about the dumb? Yeah, and that's that's going to be a matter of you know, them trying to get stuff that's working there for like, at that particular point in this group. So, uh, yeah. 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 All the time. He's asking, do we run into situations where the Japanese license holder gives us instructions that don't work well for the English adaptation? Yes, that happens all the time. Particularly with things like titles. There'll be a lot of titles uh, for shows that we're like, that's not what we want to call it over here. And they'll be like, tough, that's what you can call it. Or uh, translations. There's translations of things that they say it's going to be translated this way. Uh, there's, you're going to release it in this format and not this one. Uh, you're going to release it at this time and not. That happens all the time. They basically sold all the rights The Japanese own all the rights and and they have approval on anything and everything that gets done. Okay, they have a right of approval on everything that we do on the thing. So they are the ultimate source at the top of the chain that's looking down at it and says, yes, that is fine. We like that, we don't like that, we must change this. It happens all the time. Fortunately, we've got a long enough history with a lot of the Japanese licensors and they've been happy enough with a lot of our stuff that once you get to a certain point with them, they'll, they, we know what you do, we know what you've done in the past, we're comfortable with it, you know, so they'll just, if, if they want approval, they may just kind of glance at it and say, okay, otherwise, uh, they kind of give you more of a hands-off once they're familiar and happy with your passport. Yeah. We're talking about doing where ADD did ghost stories. Um, I, there's nothing that I know of at the moment where we might do that. If a if a particular franchise came along where that was appropriate, we might. But there's nothing at the moment that we're finding. Yeah. Yeah. Resources. They've got a lot of people that are on their site and they're really pushing it all out through that. Um, really there. You're going to be sending it to places. Um, you're, you're going to get notices up on uh, all of the main anime uh, news sites. You're going to hit uh, anime news network. You're going to hit fandom posts. Um, we can try and put stuff up on our site. You know, I really need a web designer to come and work on our site. <laughs> um, so you, 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 you try and do what you can to get the word out there. Yeah. Um, on the subject of like streaming, uh, you said simulcast. What's your primary simulcast source? Do you just do it on like, Hulu everywhere, or do you have uh, like a Hulu country or something? Our primary simulcast source. Or do have Where do you put your simulcast? What website? Do you Where do we put them? Uh, we that that depends. Because um, we don't have our own. We license it out to other streaming sites. Uh, we do stuff on uh, Crunchyroll. We do stuff on the Anime Network. Uh, we've done stuff on, um, for simul sticking to simulcasts, generally Crunchyroll and the Anime Network. I think are the two places that primarily do our simulcasts. Streaming, non-simulcast streaming is everywhere. That can be uh, Hulu, uh, Netflix, uh, Am Am Amazon, just anywhere that we use. We hit that one? Okay. I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, I'm down in the booth.
Yeah. 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 Are you sitting? Are people sitting here? I don't think so. Okay. Cool. By the way, Mike for Anime Herald. Oh yeah, I've met you before. Uh, John Janai blog. Yep. J yep. Bad time Productions. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I used to be Janai blog. <laughs> How's everything been? Pretty good. It's good con. I. Uh, it's actually my favorite every year. So oh, yeah, I, mean, same I, I love Anime Boston. Same here. I actually had to pretty much bolt down here though, because um, the Harakuma